Hi guys, today I'll be taking a look at an upgraded linear switch designed for gaming, the Kalebox Speed Ultimate. Let's get started. Now, you can think of the Box Speed Ultimate as the successor to the Kale Speed Silver, and I say that because these aren't actually the true successor. That would be the Kale Super Speed Silver, which have very similar specs to these. So, what improvements have they made then? Well, for starters, it's a box switch now. That means they're IP56 rated and have a guarantee of 80 million key presses. Secondly, these now have 5 pins as opposed to 3, just like the Kale switches in the V2 range, which is a really nice upgrade. And by the way, the Super Speed lineup only feature 3 pin switches. And finally, the spring. These have a quote 20.5mm extended noise reduction spring, which all these super speed switches have apart from the copper tactile, for some reason. Now, pricing wise, these are £7.40 for 10 switches on AliExpress, placing these in the upper mid range. And this is what they look like when disassembled. Feel free to pause the video. Now, let's move on to the switch characteristics. On-center key presses are somewhat smooth with only minor scratchiness in a few switches. Off-center key presses are inconsistent with many switches binding, especially when pressed very slowly, but I wouldn't say they're scratchy per se. Overall, these are a slight improvement over their predecessor, but not by much. 5 out of 10. Now, according to Kale, these switches have an actuation force of 45 grams at 1.3 millimeters and a total travel of 3.6 millimeters. Now, in terms of the actual key feel, they feel just as advertised, they're less sensitive, but more importantly, they don't suffer from the same weighting and actuation issues their predecessor had. Although, with that said, they're still very light switches with a high actuation point, which I'm not a fan of, but at least I didn't make as many typos with these. Overall, this is a step in the right direction for Kale, however, I'm gonna have to give these a pass as they aren't to my preferences. They're too light and too sensitive for my taste. 5 out of 10. Now, sound-wise, they're clacky with a higher than normal pitch on the upstroke, but they're decent enough. Now, if you're asking about the noise reduction spring I mentioned at the start, they don't really seem to be doing anything at all. These still sound pretty standard to me, but let me know what you guys think. Overall, it's a big improvement compared to their predecessor. I'm just glad they sound decent. 6 out of 10. Now, take a listen and enjoy. Now, typing with these was… interesting. You see, Kale decided these switches needed a new spring, however, this new spring has quite a strong upward force once actuated. It feels like it was designed not to be bottomed out. However, this made for a somewhat unpredictable typing experience as the switch always feels like it wants to reset, so this will take some time to get used to. Furthermore, I also made numerous typos and accidental key presses given these are very light and sensitive. And yes, the new spring design also contributed to that. Overall, I wouldn't use this for typing. They feel like an anti-typist switch. 4 out of 10. Now, I enjoyed using these a lot more for gaming. The unique spring setup didn't really bother me, but it also didn't bring anything new to the table. Additionally, I'm glad to report that these had no issues regarding weighting and actuation inconsistencies which made gaming more pleasant, although some off-center key presses were a bit jarring. Now, to understand what I mean, sometimes pressing a key slowly off-center produces a small unwanted tactile bump at the bottom of the keystroke. It's very noticeable and quite jarring at times. 
Furthermore, the Switch is designed to excel in fast-paced games, which it does quite well given its new spring setup. However, it's pretty much just a normal Switch in slower-paced games. Overall, unless you're a serious gamer, this is a waste of money. Switches like the Aqua POM Silver or the Gatron Pro V3 Silver are still cheaper and better options. 6 out of 10. In conclusion, whilst these are a massive improvement compared to the Kale Speed Silver, it's still only an average Switch across the board. Plus, they're very pricey compared to the competition. The final score for this Switch is 26 out of 50 or 52%, which again is a big improvement, but they're just too expensive. And that's the end of the review and next time even more speed switches. Anyway, until then, take care and goodbye.